Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alex Burnett. Uh, on behalf of the Localization Institute, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, free preview webinar, our new Machine Translation Masterclass with Dr. Pong Wang. And Pong, how are you today? It's great to see you. I'm very good. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. So good to see you all and Warwick and David and a lot of other like familiar names. And uh, thank you so much for attending my previous webinar. <laughs> yeah, and with the really global nature of, you know, in the, in the pandemic, it's amazing. We have people calling in from all over the world. So wherever you, you are, we, we welcome you in. Thanks for joining us. Um, before I turn it over to our founder, uh, Ulrich Hennis, to introduce Pong, um, I'm just going to go through a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, again, we're really excited to debut this new machine translation masterclass. Uh, our first session will be Tuesday, January 12th uh, next year. The format for the class is that we'll have four 90-minute sessions with Pong, and uh, these classes will be uh, a, an combination of instructor-led uh, uh, lecture, but also a very interactive session as well, where you're able to ask questions during the sessions with Pong and to contribute to the discussion. So we expect it to be a very lively and interactive uh, masterclass. Uh, Please save your questions for the, uh, the end today. Um, even though you have the ability to turn your audio and your camera on, we would ask that you would wait until the end of Pong's presentation. If you'd like, though, feel free to submit your questions at any time through the chat window, and I will monitor them there, and I can moderate the questions at the end. Without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to the founder of the Localization Institute, Ulrich Hennis. Ulrich, good morning. Hey, I, that would be me. Hello, everyone. Delighted to be here. Um, in 1996, I started organizing the first localization events, a round table followed quickly by a two day introduction to local introduction to localization seminar in Cupertino. And ever since then, it's been important to me that whatever we do, it be um, independent. Um, it be not, um, it be, be find independent lecturers who share their experience and their information, but there are no commercial interests hidden anywhere. Um, that's in the DNA of the Localization Institute, and I'm delighted as we pivot and have created the series of new master classes that that concept still seems to be uh, appreciated. Um, so there, while there's lots of free information, valuable information out there, um, we believe there is also very good value in presenting, uh, having a, a very capable teacher who presents objective information to the best of his or her knowledge. And I'm delighted to having been able to recruit uh, Dr. Wang Pong um, to, uh, <clears throat> for this uh, uh, machine translation masterclass. I'm a little surprised actually in this case how well it has been received and right away getting registrations because I thought, particularly in the field of machine translation, there's so much free information, so many webinars out there. Why would anyone pay for it? I hope they would, and I'm really glad that a lot of people are paying for it. I met Pong at a fundraiser for Translators Without Borders at PayPal, uh, probably what, eight, nine years ago, Pong? Yes. And yes, have really that. enjoyed working with her ever since. About a year ago, I asked her to be uh, for Lockworld, our big event, the chair of the AI machine translation track. And she has done a really great job on that. She has worked with us on the attracting and developing talent initiative, chairing meetings in Montreal in 2008, I think. I'm sorry, uh, 2008. Uh, 17, I 17. think, or 16. So yeah. we did do another event in 2008 there, but you were there just, then. Yes. Great. So, so, so anyhow, that's all I wanted to say. I'm happy to have Pong uh, teach this class, and I'm really thrilled that there are people out there who are interested in learning from that kind of teacher about machine translation. I hope we can continue and continue offering this class and refine it as we go along as machine translation and AI uh, change, get better, 
you know, Pong will update and who knows, maybe we'll be eventually offering subclasses for subsections of that whole area. So that's it for me, Alex and Pong. Great. Well, thank you, Ulrich. And uh, as I turn it over now to Pong, uh, I think Ulrich and I will turn off our cameras here. And uh, Pong, why don't you go ahead and share your screen? Okay. And then we'll get you on here. I'm going to turn my All video right, off. One moment. Let me share my screen. Okay. And again, as you have questions, uh, folks in the audience, please feel free to enter them at any time and uh, we'll take those at the end. Um, uh, just wanted to also mention, we do have uh, registrations coming in already. So uh, if you have any questions after this or would like to follow up and with a personal email to Pong as well, feel free to email me, my name is uh, Alex Burnett and my email is alex at localizationinstitute.com. Without further ado, uh, let's take a deep dive. Uh, please take it away, away Pong. All right, um, so thank you for your introduction and thank you, uh, Warwick, for your uh, introduction as well. And as you mentioned, uh, so we have been working a lot on the uh, Lockwood Attracting and Developing Talent Initiative. And uh, you mentioned Montreal, and actually we've been to all over the world, such as Barcelona and uh, uh, Santa Clara, and also Shenzhen. And so um, the aim of the ADT session is to uh, bridge the gap between academia and industry. And uh, for me, this course is a kind of continuation of this initiative because um, it has incorporated many suggestions and ideas from industry people and academics. So here I would like to thank you, Warwick, for your wonderful uh, opportunity, as well as all of those people who have given me uh, valuable inputs so that I can implement them into this course. Okay, so now let's start. Uh, let me start with my preview. So um, to start with, I wanted to say that the characteristics of any course are shaped by the expertise, knowledge, and experience of its instructor. So to really understand what this course is going to offer, I think it's reasonable that you know a little bit more about your instructor. So here I listed three of my expertise that I think are most relevant to this course. First, with my background in corporate linguistics, cognitive linguistics and language technology, I have worked with people with various disciplines in my research and practice. So I'm very good at interdisciplinary research and I really enjoy working with people from various disciplines. This allows me to see the common core features in multiple disciplines and switch between different human abstraction systems. There were two important abstraction systems that we will cover in this course. One is language and the other is mathematics. If I say language, you might, you might think, you might say that um, we are talking about it every day we're using it every day, what's special about it? But when it comes to human comprehension and production, it is much more complex and abstract than you thought. I have an example here. So for example, when I say the word chi, do you understand it? Or do you think you understand it? If I ask you this question, you probably would say, yes, of course. But if I ask you, can you tell me what this word really refers to? What's the physical object it refers to? Um, like I have a tree over here. And uh, for example, I have uh, four options over here. And you can see uh, on the top uh, left, and we can find that there's a real life chi, and then we have the chi with a magical face, and then we have a Christmas tree. And then we have a tree with uh, that tree diagram actually showing different language families. So um, you might, at this point, you might feel a little bit confused. You might think, um, then you need to ask me what the context is. Of course, um, the physical object that this word is really related to depends on the context. But the question is, 
if you are not sure, then how come you feel like you understand it at the beginning, even without asking me about what the context is? So this comes to uh, linguistic knowledge and that we have uh, founded modern linguistics over 100 years ago. It's about language, it's a semiotic system. So uh, according to modern linguistics and the meaning of a sign here is the word qi depends on its relations to other words within the system. So if I want to understand what the word qi means, and you don't need to see it, but you should have an idea in your mind as to how this word is related to other words in the system. For example, uh, bush, forest. So its meaning depends on, not actually on the object, uh, physical object that it refers to, but on our psychological association. So language is no more and no less an abstraction system that helps humans understand and approach our physical and psychological world. Well, then you might ask, is it relevant to machine translation? This is linguistic theory. I would say very much. Because computer science and mathematics are just doing the same thing from a different perspective. And that is a scientific perspective. So they have their own ways to visualize and simulate the human world. So uh, this is the first strength I talked about, I've already mentioned. And my second strength is my industry experiences. I value practice greatly. That's the reason why I pursued a master's of professional studies at MISS, the Monterey Institute of International Studies, after I received my PhD. But my ultimate goal is to make my research applicable and useful for the industry. I strongly believe that the best innovative ideas of research come from industry. My third strength is my mastery of different types of tools. For me, as I mentioned just now, technology is not just tools to enhance productivity and streamline the process. What's more important, it is a way to capture our concepts, thoughts, and behavior. So imagine a technical architect wanted to design a new technology system. This person must start with a real life scenario and then turn those concepts and behaviors into some specific features of the software. So I think this is like a human perspective from top down. When we learn tools, one of the most effective way I have found, uh, according to my experience of teaching technology uh, to uh, students all over the world with various cultural background and technical background uh, in the past like a decade. And I found that the most effective way is not to learn that the students to learn technology, just by technology in itself, but by learning it by humans' common sense. So um, that's also one of my uh, feature, or one of the, this course's feature, that I try to make use of the common sense of all of you to understand technology, to understand the principles behind these technological tools. Um, so after talking about my uh, expertise that is relevant to the course. And now I'm going to uh, briefly introduce each session's main content. In the first session, we will take a holistic view to see different types of machine translation technology, in particular, neural machine translation. Here, I would like to emphasize that this course is not just about machine, it's about human. From this course, I hope I can help you figure out how humans can react to machine evolution within and beyond the accelerated localization process. Recently, um, we've been uh, listening to and uh, machine translation training, uh, sorry, machine training and machine learning, and they're very hot topics. But I think human training in this regard 
is cannot be ignored. We should help people understand what they are so that we know how to react to the dynamics that machine brings about. And I want to uh, be very frank here that I myself is not an engineer who uh, really built machine translation engines, but I respect and recognize all the work and efforts of those who did it. And, and in this course, rather than focusing on any specific machine translation engine, I wanted to put them into perspectives and discuss the common features of each type of technological solutions so that you can apply this knowledge and skills to your own empty implementation architecture based on your specific business scenarios. The second session. Okay, so we will learn some specific skills and methodology that are relevant to machine translation engine training and machine learning. As I said before, I'm not a person who create machine translation engines. This course will focus on the training of machine. In particular, I will focus on three types of data, and that is terminology, translation memory, and human feedback. We will also see how these data sets function at various steps of the localization process and how they impact the whole translation ecosystem. We will also discuss different machine translation implementation scenarios based on the characteristics of each type of MT solution. We will also introduce some markup language that is used to store and transport data so that you can do some basic linguistic analysis. But this course does not aim to teach you how to write code. Rather, we aim to bridge the gap between the technology world and the non-technology world so that stakeholders can have a more efficient uh, collaboration. And in the third session, we will focus on machine translation risk management. I know if I asked this, uh, if I raise this point and your eyes might light up and you are hoping that I can give you a, a solution or super bullet that can help you eliminate risks once and for all. But in real life, this is a very complex question, but we will delve into it in our course. A key approach I'm going to apply to manage dynamic situations is to resort to some fundamental principles so that we can create relevant methodology and analytical tools. Um, for example, like algorithms and data analytical tools. Um, in psychology, there is a concept called perceptual constancy. For example, when you see a door, the door might be open, the door might be closed, or the door might be half closed, half open. But no matter what the door, uh, what the status the door is, the door is that door. Okay, so, so that is um, what I'm going to apply in this uh, risk management uh, component of this course. And the last session aims to further explore the relationship between human and machine so that we can leverage artificial intelligence effectively. Artificial intelligence is actually a two-edged sword. It can be both beneficial and problematic. The way machine process information, as we said before, is different from that of humans. And we mentioned that different human abstraction systems and obviously machine does not do the same way as humans process uh, meaning and process uh, the perceptions of the human world or both physically and psychologically. So uh, it actually challenges the traditional linguistic concept about meaning. Um, so basically, neural networks don't necessarily need to learn certain ideas or understand meaning in order to recognize what the right ideas are. Okay, so you might say, understand the meaning versus recognizing the right expression, the right idea. Is it a big distinction? I would say it's a huge one. Here's an example. 
Uh, so this translation was from Google Machine Translate in 2017. And if you look at the title clearly, you can see that uh, the MT translated supreme leader in the title used for North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, as Mr. Squidward, um, just like the character from the cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants. And this is because machine learning engine behind the system learns from a corpus of web sources. There were different types of language data in the corpus and the algorithms give a great weight to translations offered by users. That's the reason why machine picks up Mr. Squidward words and concluded that it is the right choice. So, there's room and opportunity for malicious manipulation of machine learning algorithms if you understand it and if you want to do it. All right, so um, that's uh, the previews. Uh, basically, uh, I covered what I, I'm going to uh, include in this course. And now I'm ready to take your questions. Alex, I cannot hear you. Sorry about that. I can turn the video on, but not the not the audio. Thank mm -hmm. you very very much, Dr. Wang. That was a very informative overview of uh, of the class. We do have a couple of qu questions already, and um, now that we've seen a little bit about what each of the sessions are are going to contain, our first question actually asks about a specific uh, subset of machine translation and wonders: Will you be addressing audio and visual video translation specifically at, at all in the course? Is there a sir, you know, that might come into the discussion in these sessions? Um, uh, so, uh, so firstly, you said it's audio and video uh, uh, translation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I think it's, uh, so basically we can classify translation into different types, like written translation, like spoken translation, and like audio and video is mostly more related to uh, spoken translation. And I myself is a conference interpreter. And so, so I am particularly interested in spoken machine translation as well. And currently, um, so these two aspects are actually, they are related because uh, if you see currently the spoken machine translation area and the basic principle, uh, how they do that is to use the speech recognition software. And then, so basically speech to text, the text to speech software to convert the, uh, the audio uh, text into uh, into text and text into the audio back, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, so so uh, spoken machine translation is closely related to written machine translation, but uh, does does that does not mean I agree with this approach, um, because I myself is uh, um, like a practitioner uh, doing a lot of spoken. Uh, translation that is interpret interpreting. So I think uh, um, spoken machine translation or spoken translation, uh, it includes a lot of communicative factors uh, in, in the process. So um, I think sooner or later, uh, if you just uh, keep on following this trend, like uh, text to speech, speech to text, and then you just uh, uh, like insert uh, the uh, spoken, the machine translated engine into that, uh, soon it will hit a uh, bottleneck um, because you, you cannot explain and you cannot uh, model uh, the communicative factors that is so rich in the spoken machine translation. To go back to your question, yes, I will address it. And uh, I can certainly incorporate it into my uh, course. And basically it's your course or the participants course. And I would like to uh, listen to what you want to uh, know about that. And we can, we can definitely uh, look into this question. Great. I mean, I would think that particularly uh, the risk management might be unique for audiovisual translation, and uh, and so that might fit into the third session. Yes, that's right. Great. Great. Uh, another question is um, uh, comes from Tina, and she wonders: uh, in addition to the sessions, you know, do you recommend setting aside any time for readings or homework? Uh, what kind of uh, exercises will people be doing during the course? Okay, I hope definitely. You can read something 
and uh, I know that everybody is busy. And um, but this course, if you, you come to this course because you wanted to learn something, okay? And so, uh, like my teaching is not just what I'm like the ninety minutes I'm going to uh, talk. Um, it should incorporate more. And the most efficient way to incorporate more content into my course is you do some work on your own so that I can make better use of my time when we interact with each other. And so, um, so this course, like I said, is your course. And I respect your, um, your time. I respect your willingness. Um, but like I'm a teacher for many years and usually I give my students assign them readings and and then I can help them to make the reading process less com complex and they might spend less time with me and because I can point out what's the thing that you might tend to pay attention to and I might also inspire you to uh, pay attention to something that you 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 thought before it is bored and uh, so like I said uh, one of my uh, I think is my trick of teaching technology is to use people's common sense so I found a clear connection between uh, humans like a uh, way of to perceive the world as well as machines although they have differences and so so definitely um, I, I, I hope that I can do all these things. And I also do like surveys, interactive surveys each session. Like I teach other courses, I, I send them survey and ask them um, and to, to test whether they have really understand uh, what I have given. And, uh, but like I said, um, all those people in this course are quite different from my students in universities and i respect your time your schedule and uh so so basically i'm flexible great uh tina also added an anna in question there which is just um will you be looking at any specific case studies uh i know that you and i were just uh connecting on linkedin uh last week uh regarding you know amazon's current mm -hmm. debut in, in Sweden. Will you be looking closer at, uh, you know, um, real world uh, case studies? Of course, that's the point of this course, right? Um, and that's the fun of this course. And I mean, I talked about constancy and fundamental principles. And that's so important because like I said, no matter what the status is and the constancy is there, but to make the constancy more colorful is to see the incidences happening around us. And um, so we talked about, like I gave a post of the Amazon machine translation, and I actually take a very neutral attitude to this type of mistake because catastroph catastrophic errors are not, are not new for machine translation. Um, so since machine translation established this problem is 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 everywhere and so um, so it's just because they happen to uh, see such kind of uh, situations and um, but there are some ways we can uh, we can control um, so basically like we can use linguistic analysis tools and we can make some models, we can make some, uh, take some measures to prevent such kind of mistakes happen again. And so, um, yes, and I, I very much like to incorporate a lot of real life examples. And if you have some idea, feel free to uh, propose them. And I think it's much more fun when we talk about something that we both interested. That's, that's great. And, you know, Dr. Wang, I love how you, you say this class is for you. It is for the students and the students will help define the scope and the topics that are in, addressed in the courses. Indeed, because um, I've been teaching a lot of, uh, for many years and I found what's more important for teachers, not what I know, is what, my, what knowledge are relevant to my students. And that is the most important part of teaching. Great. 
We had another uh, follow-up question uh, on audiovisual translation. This comes from uh, Tamara, and she wonders, are you going to focus uh, specifically on approaches and challenges to the post-editing process? And, you know, again, with audiovisual translation, that mm -hmm. might be different. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, I talked about different uh, machine translation solutions. So post-editing, machine translation post-editing is just one type of solution. We have different types of solutions as well. Like now we have the interactive machine translation. And so it's, it's not just after machine finish the translation, you do the edit. It's during the process of doing that. And of course, when we do that and you get different types of data, in particularly uh, the data that comes from humans, human feedback. And so, um, so I will, uh, if I talk, like uh, depending on your interest, if I incorporate uh, like spoken machine translation, audio visual uh, translation, I would like to uh, incorporate uh, that uh, into my overall uh, holistic view about different MT solutions so that you can have a bigger picture rather than just to focus on one type of solution. Great. Well, I'd like everyone to know, I know that some of our attendees arrived a little late today. If you missed uh, the beginning of today's webinar, uh, we've recorded it and uh, today we will get that posted to the course website. Again, that's localizationinstitute.com slash MTMC for Machine Translation Masterclass. And uh, we should have the recording of this webinar up uh, at the latest by tomorrow morning. Um, again, if you have any other additional follow-up questions you'd like to send, please contact me at alex at localization institute.com and I can pass them on to Dr. Wang. Uh, again, on behalf of Localization Institute, we're really thrilled to put on this new masterclass. Um, I'm excited for January to hurry up and get here so we can get started. But um, Dr. Wang, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, we really appreciate it and we're excited for your first session. My pleasure and thank you all for attending this preview webinar. I like your questions and uh, I'm pretty sure that we will we'll have a very good time in our course. Great. Well, thanks again for joining everyone and we, we hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.